This week, and it's an important topic, the growing need to strengthen digital vocational training. Also, why a local industry leader feels the old advertising agency model is simply outdated. Influencing the influencers. Our premium cognac brand got local trendsetters to try something new. And we're also going to take a look at an international campaign by a snack brand that is advocating for more unstructured playtime for children. Well, very warm welcome to you, and let's start with this. Over the past few years, Liberty Africa has delivered what it terms demand-driven digital skills and content development training to more than 85,000 people. That's an impressive number. With the primary target being the youth, these young professionals have come to create something which is akin to a sustainable livelihood. A recent rebrand saw the Academy renamed Digify Africa, and he had to tell us more about this and also the growing need for digital vocational training is Akaza Mtembu, Head of Strategy at the organization, and a very warm welcome to you. Educate you. me, first of all. Mm -hmm. Digital vocational training, what is it? Okay, so digital vocational training is really about giving young people the skills that they'll need um, to hit the ground running. So it's a lot more practical and a lot more hands-on than maybe more of a theoretical approach that your traditional universities would take. We focus on digital marketing as our main focus, but on top of that, we then look at job readiness training. So we find that a lot of our candidates will come through, but training on how to handle interviews and how to just handle themselves in the workplace. So over and above the skills of social media and content creation and really understanding how online ads work it's also just about are you ready to enter the workforce i know it's a thing it's important but do <laughs> brands actually get this are they factoring in this whole digital world into their marketing sufficiently I think actually what we're finding is that brands are really driving that forward when it comes to digital marketing. It is something that is growing. A lot more brands are jumping onto it. Right now, if your brand is not online, then you're not moving as fast as you could be and you're not speaking to the customers that you could be. So we're definitely finding a lot of brands doing some really interesting things when it comes to digital globally and in South Africa. I want to get to the training in just a moment, but measurability in the space is always tricky for brands. People are looking at it, but whether the, the, the call to action is actually mm -hmm. resulting in something is still fairly murky, isn't it? Of course, I think it's twofold. Mm -hmm. I mean, there hasn't been a medium that allows us to get the numbers um, as much as digital allows us to do. So you're able to see how many people are looking at your tweet. You're able to see how many people engaged with it, right? But I think on the other side is that people... But that's just one step, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's just yeah. one step, right? So there's also the vanity metrics, right? So having 10,000 likes well, on your page doesn't mean cares? that you've got yeah. 10,000 people who are actually buying. So I think what we need to do is then go a step further and then say, what are the numbers that really matter? And engagement matters more than how many likes that you have because there's people who've actually read your content, who've clicked through to your website to then read some more to engage more with your content. And I think it's not just something that's just going to solve everything, you know, so it, it, you can't just focus on digital. The traditional media is still important, even though digital is growing. That does need to be something that plays off offline and online. So what are the, the, the different strategies mm. that sort of converge? But I mean, the caveat message? to that argument is that a brand has no choice but to be there. Absolutely. They've just got to have a, a broader understanding of the potential. And I think a more in-depth understanding of the strategy that drives it. So it's, I mean, one thing to have your social media uh, platforms, but is there a strategy? Is there thinking behind behind what you're doing because everyone is on social media. There's a lot of content that's out there. What is the thinking that's driving your content that's going to make me click onto it? You know, So are you understanding your customers? And the nice thing again about social media and about digital media is that it allows you to understand your customer base better than any other medium has allowed you to. Having sketched it out for me, patently we have a skills deficit in this respect. Why is that? I think there are a number of challenges. I think South Africa's education system, we know, um, has many, many challenges. But one of them is, I think, just how slowly things change. And I think when it comes to something like digital and ICT, is that the industry changes every day. I mean, for traditional sort of educational institutions to be able to change their curriculum quickly enough, they're not doing it quickly enough. We've also got teachers who aren't necessarily trained to be able to know how to use digital. So there's still a lot of fear that comes, um, particularly from, I think, an older generation about what is, what, what, what is 
is online and the dangers and the very real dangers that are online. So I think it also needs to be like a retraining of teachers as well, which we know, I mean, has been challenges with the new, uh, new curriculum that keeps on coming through and I think maybe almost like a fatigue from the teachers. Um, when it comes to infrastructure as well, there are many schools that don't have computer labs. Um, there are some schools that do have computer labs, but no one in the school who actually knows how to use it. So I think it's also just about even the educators themselves sort of needing the training there. There's the high cost of data in South Africa that are really a huge barrier in getting young people online. And even when they do get online, the content that's there isn't necessarily speaking about them and to them. It's still quite Eurocentric. It's still quite created by Americans and for Americans. I'm interested that you raise the issue of teaching the teachers because it would be my contention that if you point a millennial in this direction inherently, they have an understanding of it anyway. So it's not necessarily the application which is important so much as perhaps the thinking and the strategy behind it. It's one thing for us to have um, in a classroom students who understand the internet, but if the teacher doesn't understand it, then they aren't using it efficiently as a learning tool. And that's mm. what we're also looking at. So how do we use social media platforms? So in our training, we use Facebook groups as a support tool for the learning. If young people are going to be on Facebook anyway, can that be a way where we extend the learning and extend an opportunity for them to be able to engage with their trainers on a platform that they know? But that's because we as trainers and as the educators understand that and are able to bring that into the classroom. So typically, how would a training course be structured then? So, I mean, we've got various training courses. I've literally just come back from Nigeria from launching an eight-week um, program that we have, and what that looks at is training a group of 20 young people who are then going to go into various agencies, and that is um, a nine-to-five, Monday-to-Friday training, so part of it is also getting the work skills and you getting used to sort of the office hours. But what it is is um, you're given a live brief on a Monday from an agency, and we partner with a lot of agencies to come and bring a, a, a brief that they're currently working on, and you then apply the learning that you Learned. So I mean, you would have had a trainer come in to really teach you about social media and the brief that week would be about social media. You spend the week really tackling with that brief. And on the Friday, you go back into agency and are able to present um, to agency. And we force the agencies as well or ask the agencies to really look at them um, in the same way that they would look at their team who are presenting their ideas. So to be as hard on them with the feedback um, and as critical with it. So it really is about hands on learning. I think the word that you've inadvertently used and you've corrected yourself is ask, but it is forcing the agencies because in many cases, agencies need to be dragged into this <laughs> new paradigm, don't they? Yeah, but I think what we're also finding is that agencies are open to it. You know, I think once, also once we've presented that we've got 20 young people who are already ready to go into the agency. So right now in South Africa, we've graduated about 200 in this particular program, which is about the advertising agencies. And one of our biggest partners, which is the IAB, all of the agencies that fall under there have loved the graduate that have come through there. So where they might have been slightly hesitant, because also what we do in South Africa is that you don't necessarily need to have a marketing degree for you to become part of the program. So traditionally, HR is always looking for what kind of degree do you have. But right now, we're saying to you is that they might not have that official degree, but they do have this training, and that has actually given them the skills that they would need to be able to learn on the job. What makes a good digital candidate? What type of person are you looking for? We're looking for young people who are willing to consistently learn. So um, like I said, young um, digital is changing, forever changing. So you need to have that interest and you need to be able to be interested in finding out where the information is. Thank you very much. Forward to a digital future. We'll yeah. talk to you again. Coming up on the program, why an industry leader says the old advertising agency model, and boy, we've just referenced that, haven't we, uh, is in desperate need of disruption. Later on in the program, why an international snack brand is campaigning for more unstructured playtime for children. South Africa's first choice for news. This is ENCA.